As 2021 now rapidly draws to a close, it's time for us to take a look back at the year that was and some of our tiny house highlights. Two thousand twenty-one has been yet another year full of challenges, travel restrictions, and lockdowns, which sadly has greatly affected our ability to produce as many videos as usual. But that doesn't mean we still haven't been able to explore and visit some truly incredible homes and meet the inspiring individuals who dwell within them. And now it's time to look back on some of this year's highlights. To find out more about each of these homes, you can find links to the full tours in the description of this video. One of this year's most impressive builds was ex-helicopter pilot Mark's stunning and totally off-the-grid tiny home in Taupo. This house was packed full of innovative ideas. Approaching retirement, Mark loved the idea of downsizing and simplifying his life. A tiny house was the perfect fit. After a lot of time planning his design, Mark got stuck in and constructed an amazing home for himself. I like working with my hands, I like making things, and I've uh, done a lot of that my whole life, where my father encouraged me with woodworking and, and taught me a lot of my skills initially, and and we've just been that way inclined, where if we need things, we tend to make things ourselves, and so we're, I've come from that background. Yeah, it's very satisfying to have been, been able to do something yourself. This completely DIY tiny home is now situated on a farm where Mark has also found some part-time work. His home is cleverly thought out with loads of storage and even clever features such as his pull-out coffee station. I quite like my coffee so it was a, a bit of a prerequisite in the design that I had to have the coffee station. <laughs> so to get access to this I made another slide out here so that the whole thing comes out. If I've got to top the machine up with water and I've got to fill this with beans, the grinder, then I can just slide it out and get access and pop it back in again. So yeah, that's the coffee machine. The home carefully tracks its power performance too, with an integrated solar power monitoring system. All in all, this is an amazing place for Mark to call home, and a truly impressive DIY build. Next up, we have Ruby's beautiful tiny home, which has been situated on her family's multi-generational farm. With a desire to remain debt-free and also able to remain situated on her family's spectacular property, Ruby has designed and built a dream place to call home. Her house is perfectly positioned to gain spectacular views over the land. A keen gardener, Ruby has also planted beautiful flower and vegetable gardens around her tiny home, where the gardens have now truly become an extension of the house itself. You know, eventually I do want to um, live off the land completely and be self-sufficient and grow as much as I can. The single level design home is open and spacious and has been constructed using many materials which were found around her farm and property, ensuring her family history has also been built into the walls of her home. So each plank of wood is actually a different type of tree from the farm. So it was actually my grandparents' table, so they had six kids, so there was eight of them sitting around this table having dinner. And now I've got it in my place, which is pretty awesome. An extension in the form of an exterior shower, bathroom and laundry completes the space. This is a magical home that most importantly enables her to remain connected to her family and her family land. As much as we love tiny homes on wheels, for those who own their own land, building a small home or cabin on foundations can truly allow you to build with a new level of creativity. In Twizel, retired police officer Gary teamed up with architect Barry Connor to construct the Skylark Cabin. This incredible small home has been perfectly designed to nestle beautifully into the imposing landscape. Here in the Mackenzie Basin, you know, we've got the world's largest night sky reserve, so you've got to recognise that and incorporate it into your home design. If you didn't do that, you wouldn't be doing the place justice. From its brilliant construction, unique shapes, quality material choices and clever design features, this home is truly an amazing achievement. Just as much attention has also been placed on the landscaping, where the home surrounds enjoy wonderful gardens and luxury features such as the outdoor tub, which also helps to embed the home even further into the natural landscape. 
The home is located in the middle of a dark sky sanctuary, and aspects of the home such as the large roof window above the bed have been designed to ensure you always have a wonderful framed view of the clear night sky. People come in, they open the door, they can see outside, and the skylight's the first thing in here that they see. And then when they turn around here, they get the view outside. So we wanted to draw people to the skylight first and then the outside. We have this fantastic uh, landscape out there, so we just have to see it. Overall, this is a cabin which is just as beautiful as it is functional, and a place I'm sure we would all be more than happy to call home. Now we all love shipping container homes, and Rosie's container home in New Zealand's Coromandel is one of the best that we have seen yet. Completely off the grid and constructed using 520 foot shipping containers, this home has been situated on a hill to provide breathtaking views of the surrounding mountainous terrain. Located in the middle of the conservation estate, the home's small footprint provides a comfortable place for Rosie to live without taking a huge toll on the surrounding landscape. So Mahakarau Forest Estate is um, it's a reserve. It's a privately owned um, reserve. We've been given status for a sanctuary. And basically it's 25 lots over 1,100 acres. Wow. And at 23 acres, mine's the smallest of all the lots, of beautiful, beautiful bush. And it's 95% QE2 covenanted. So it's all about guardianship and looking after the native creatures. And yeah, it's, it's different, it's great. <laughs> Traditionally, this would have been a difficult and expensive site to build on, but constructing the home in shipping containers and having them individually trucked in and assembled on site helped to make the build possible in this difficult location. Rosie has designed her home to be perfectly suited to her and her needs. From her bedroom where she wakes up next to a giant window looking out over the bush, to a comprehensive library and reading space, this shipping container house has everything she needs to make her feel at home. I've always wanted a floor-to-ceiling library. There's probably two decades of op shopping and book sales <laughs> gone into the library, and I'm, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. Wow, and look at how organised you are as well. Yeah, it's one of the few areas of my life I'm actually organised in, <laughs> is my library. Calling it the Rosie classification system, because it's, <laughs> it makes sense to me. So I know where to find all my, all my study books, and um, just a whole array of non-fiction and good sci-fi as well. Without a doubt, living in this shipping container home would make you feel as though you're always on holiday. Last up, and certainly not least, we have Ryan and Ziski's DIY Tiny House on Wheels. This home is without a doubt one of the absolute best DIY builds we have ever visited. When Ryan and Ziski approached their tiny house build, they had absolutely no prior building experience, and yet their home is not only incredibly well constructed, it's also packed out with clever and creative features, such as full smart home automation, a hidden piano keyboard, and even a matching dog house with green roof. This is the tiny tiny house, so that's where the dogs live, and it's got a little living roof, and it's got windows and it's big enough for us and the dogs to go and chill out in, which is really nice. One of the things I've always loved about DIY homes is the way that people build their own characters into the houses, and that's certainly true with this home. A unique blend of modern and bohemian design, this house is a melting pot between Ryan and Ziski's individual design flares, which have blended together beautifully in this home. The design is a real mash between the two styles that Ziski and myself sort of came into this with. So I think if it was completely my style, it would be very monochromatic and- Like how, a morgue. Like a morgue, <laughs> like a morgue, Ouch. sure. <laughs> In um, a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was all the way design style towards Siski's way, it would probably be very, very eclectic and covered in vines and- yeah, and Your so description of her taste is much kinder. <laughs> yeah, it is, eh? it is. <laughs> It's also a real one for plant lovers, with abundant house plants at times making you feel as though you're in the middle of a forest. Once we had the shell in and we had the lining on, we started thinking about all the little touches that we wanted in it. And of course, adding plants was yeah. a really big part of making it feel like a home. And we've got a really nice relationship with, with all of our plants. Like Yeah, they all um, have names. <laughs> <laughs> we name them all, but they go through their different phases and it's really, it's really lovely. It's just 
the move towards living tiny has also been like a fundamental shift in what we find important. Mm. Um, and so we got rid of a whole lot of things when we moved into the tiny house. But one of the aspects that we really, I guess, increased in volume was the number of plants that we have um, now to care for. This tiny house is an incredible example of what you can achieve with no experience, but a whole lot of drive, creativity, and determination. We really hope that you've enjoyed our videos this year. And even though we haven't been able to visit as many homes as usual, we really have enjoyed visiting all of these wonderful places and being able to share these stories with you. Here's hoping that 2022 is going to be a much bigger and better year for all of us. Until then, Happy New Year. We wish you all the best for 2022. Have fun, stay safe, and we will see you all again very soon.